Welcome to a short reflection by Sebastian Mafud on Canto I of Dante's Purgatorio. Were we in any season other than Lent, we would sing hosannas and alleluias for a successful climb out of the pit of hell. But there will be time enough for that when we enter paradise. In Dante's world, it's now Easter Sunday. He spent, like Christ, Holy Saturday in hell. What the poets see ahead of them are the heavens, and the road that will lead them there, one tall mountain, the same that Ulysses saw before a wind from this island sank his ship. Dante begins by invoking Calliope, the muse of epic poetry, in gazing at the sun, peeking over the horizon, and the four stars representing the four cardinal virtues. Suddenly he notices an old man standing before him and Virgil, and the man begins his greeting to them by first challenging their right to be there. He knows from the ash on Dante's face that they've just climbed up from hell, and mistakes them for refugees. Virgil responds as he did in hell, by explaining that Dante's on a mission from heaven, and attempts to flatter Cato by first invoking Dante's mission of freedom, and next Cato's wife's seeming prayers from hell. In the first instance, Cato, it should be known, is a suicide. He killed himself in Utica, present-day Tunisia, after the Battle of Thapsus, when Julius Caesar's troops occupied the city, and he did it by stabbing himself in the gut. When his friends doctored his wounds, he awoke to find himself healing, and ripped into his stomach with his bare hands, flinging his entrails one after another unto his bed. So relates Colleen McCulloch in her six-volume series on the life of Caesar. Cato isn't with the suicides in the seventh circle, though, and there's a reason. Suicide in Aristotle's schema is a crime against society, but Cato's society had already been broken by Caesar. His choice, he believed, was either slavery within a society Caesar would rebuild, or freedom by his own hand. Cato's presence here is explained in this way, but it is still problematic for readers of Dante who interpret suicide as an act of injustice against the self. As far as Marcia, Cato's wife, is concerned, he says her supplications can no longer reach him. The story of Marcia is that Cato had divorced her so she could marry Hortensius, a man thirty years her senior, and took her back when Hortensius died. Charity notes that this story is an allegory for the return of the strayed soul to God. When Cato died in 46 BC, Chardy notes, he was sent to limbo, but he was summoned by God, presumably when he was harrowing hell, to the special office of guarding the shore of the island. Cato is described by Dante as reflecting the light of all four cardinal virtues, and is a symbol of the natural love of freedom, and the road to ultimate freedom, of course, is purgatory. Cato agrees to let the poets pass, but only after Dante has washed his face at the shore of the island, and bound a green reed around his waist which is a fitting requirement since Dante has to descend to that point, and can then start his ascent from the very bottom of the island. The green reed, which symbolizes rebirth, and which also replaces the cord Virgil had earlier tossed into the eighth pit to summon Gerion, becomes the first miracle on the island, a demonstration of the presence of the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, for when Virgil plucks it from the ground, another takes its place. Looking at purgatory from a God's eye view, we see the Garden of Eden on top of the seven ledges, with its two rivers, Lethe, which washes all memory of sin down into Cossetus past Satan's feet, and Unoi, which enhances all memory of the good. Before a soul makes it to this point, though, it has to climb the mountain. That's what we're doing this Lenten season, climbing our own spiritual mountain through our conscious acts of fasting and prayer.